Okay, on the same theme, I think, but slightly different, we have Nicola McLeod who's joining us. She's the Managing Director of the Scotland Division of Warm Works, and she's going to talk about innovation and retrofit, squaring the circle of a just transition. It's all yours. Round of applause, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's only two of us left, so let's keep the energy in the room and try and keep focus. We're going to get to the end, and John's going to keep us to time as well. So, firstly, um, Warmworks, who are we? So, Warmworks were founded in 2015. Um, it's a joint venture with three partners um, to deliver the Scottish Government's National Fuel Poverty Scheme. Um, we now deliver contracts across the whole of Scotland. We were appointed um, last year to deliver the Scottish Government's new phase of Warmer Home Scotland, which is a £728 million programme which runs into 2030. Um, the scheme provides that um, whole house retrofit to homes that are at risk or who are in or at risk of fuel poverty. So it goes back to some of those discussions earlier on, and I think, Jamie, you mentioned that as well around when you're going into a house to carry out work. It's not a new build. There's people living in there. It can be really difficult. People's situations are difficult as well, and it's about finding that right solution for the homeowner and the property as well. We've also delivered more than £10 million worth of decarbonisation projects for social landlords, and I'm going to come on to give you a couple of examples of those in case studies later in the slides. So more than 40,000 householders have been helped across our schemes, um, and we've helped save an average of around £300 of their annual fuel bill savings. Obviously, that can be very different regarding, depending on the measures that are installed in people's homes. We've also created more than 160 apprenticeships and over 700 new jobs, which is absolutely incredible. It's leaving those lasting skills behind in communities. We've been able to do that as a lot of the contracts that we have last for multiple years. And I know that's always a commitment. It's difficult for SME installer, you know, SME employers, sorry, to make that commitment to a four-year apprenticeship or even more. So by having contracts that last for multiple years, we're able to encourage that through our supply chain. Warmworks don't install anything, so we have a network of installers of, um, right now across Scotland we've got 35 installers, some based in Shetland, some in Stornoway, um, and then we also have our um, installers based across England as well. Um, they, really, it's about delivering that national scheme, but on a local scale. I mean, some of our installers is a husband and wife, you know, who, who live in an area and they cover, you know, that, it could be Orkney, Shetland, it could be in the, the north of Scotland. Um, and it's really about ensuring that they have the opportunity to access that national um, help and support that's available. Really, our skill set at Warmworks is about providing that end-to-end -end support for the customer um, and working with communities um, and understanding that individuals' homes are important to them and also looking at what additional support that we can provide along the way. This is um, just a very quick overview of a, a customer journey. Now, every customer journey might look different. It depends on the contract. It depends on the requirements of the customer. I think this goes back to something that um, there was a presentation this morning, John Maslow from Innovate, was top 10, and number one was the customer. I mean, this really is about that kind of wrap around support and making sure that the customer is at the heart of the journey. Um, this part of the customer, I'm talking about the end user. So just quickly, an overview here, um, we would receive a referral from that, that customer. That could come from the social landlord. It could come from Home Energy Scotland. It could come through various partnerships that are out there. We would then complete an assessment in that home and make a recommendation based on what the property needs. And then one of our registers installers would go out and install the work. We would then carry out an independent inspection. And I think that's really important. We don't ask installers to mark their own homework. We will go out and carry out an inspection to make sure that the product's been installed to manufacturer specification, make sure the customer has been shown how the technology works. I mean, if you were to go and speak to, we talked earlier on about your neighbours and about people you bump into in the street. If you were to visit someday, you know, an Orkney who's had an oil system for the last, you know, it could be the family home for the last 80 years, putting an air source heat pump in their house, it's like putting a spaceship in the back garden. You know, it really does take, you need to make sure that the end user is comfortable and they're confident in terms of using the technologies that are installed. And then we will um, work with that customer for a period of time over a kind of warranty period, and if required, an annual service visit would be completed. It just depends on the technology that's been installed in the home. 
So can it now looking at the role that innovation plays in retrofit? So our experiences uh, around innovation have been about um, introducing it on the schemes when it's the right time and in the right way. Um, when you're delivering a national scheme, you need to make sure that you're able to adopt that across the whole of Scotland. It would be very unfair of us to say we're just going to put it in one area and no one else gets access to that. Or we look at other schemes where we can, add, we can look to do small projects in communities with um, uh, reg registered sector landlords. So here's just a few of the technologies that have been introduced since 2015. So we introduced the Qbot technology, so that's a form of um, robot under the floor, so that's where a person might not be able to fit. Um, I don't know if anybody in the room has seen the Qbot technology, but um, you know it's, uh, it's an Xbox controller controls this um, robot which goes in under the floor, uses sensors to spray the foam under the floor, and then um, you know the results can be um, excellent for customers in terms of that air tightness and the, um, making sure the home is warmer. We are looking at a smart ventilation, which is the AREX technology. So these are vents that replace the existing vents in your property, but they have um, humidity and temperature controls on them, and they open and close, um, depending. So again, that it just um, makes it works on that envelope of the property to make sure we're keeping as much heat in as we can, but making sure that ventilation obviously is key there to make sure that we're not making it too tight and causing the unintended consequences of putting something in the home. We've increased the scale of heat pump technologies, I think, in 2015. I think the number 56 rings a bell. Don't quote me on it, but that kind of number rings a bell. Last year, we installed over 1,000 heat pumps across Scotland. So it just shows that year on year, we've been in installing that technology in more homes when it is suitable for that homeowner. We won't install the technology if, it, if the running costs are going to be higher. We need to make sure that they've got the, the insulation in the properties correct. And we also need to make sure that the customer is in that place where they can have a technology fitted and they've got the right tariffs and they've got the right meters, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also introduced battery storage um, into our social housing projects. Um, we had the same experience as, as Connor, but we had some good examples of that back in 2019 when it actually meant that it was the right time to put battery storage in one of the projects, which I'll talk to you about because nobody was using um, the grid during the day, so the customers were benefiting from that at night. So that was a, one of the positives from, from that project. So I'm just going to give you a couple of examples here. So this is um, a project uh, with Angus Housing Association. We targeted 32 properties in a Kirkbank estate, so a very small estate where we looked, um, the customers had electric storage heating systems in their property, quite old um, storage heaters as well. We managed to secure funding from the Social Housing Net Zero Heat Fund. So 50% of the costs were met through that fund and the Housing Association um, paid the rest of the costs. The package of measures consisted of solar PV, air source heat pump and battery storage. Um, the project was, the aims of the projects were um, to secure bill savings and cut carbon emissions and bring the properties up to the, as close to feasible for, for each two at the time. Um, a SAP increase of an average of 13 points per property. Um, and I didn't bring any videos with us, but if you do want to access our website, you will see some of the videos on there. There's some great stories from customers about the difference it's made. I think some of the things that we found is along work inside the client, a lot of um, social landlords know their tenants. A lot of them are known to them, and you always know who that one person is in the estate that's going to make a difference. And as soon as you get them on board, they get all, everybody rallying around them. They kind of become an advocate for the scheme. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of events about people on. We didn't need to. She was bringing cups of tea out to the street to give to some of the homeowners to get them to encourage to work side us. Her house was done first. She really became an advocate for the scheme, and it was, a, it was an excellent opportunity for us to work alongside not only the, the customers but also the landlord to deliver this project. The next project was the Green Economy Fund project. So this was a SPEM project um, that funded uh, domestic battery storage um, using smart uh, time of use tariffs. It was a £1.2 million project, fully funded through SPEN. Um, we installed over 140 Tesla Powerwall batteries into people's properties, um, and there was some independent monitoring carried out um, on behalf of SPEN as well. The average consumption on a dual tariff was around £290. Now, as I said there, um, the dual tariff, and I said it's about a smart economy tariff, because of the time when this happened, a lot of tariffs were pulled. So a lot of customers didn't get on to that smart tariff bef before it was actually withdrawn from the market. So that's the worst case scenario. If you go back to a presentation earlier this morning, you'll see if you're on a smart tariff installing a battery, you know, it was kind of north of £600 in some cases that customers were saving on their annual fuel bills. Um, 
We have also uh, continued for, uh, working with that customer to fit heat pumps uh, and PV as well um, on an annual basis using funding that is available in that Dumfries and Galloway area. So I am nearly there. I am going to keep to time. I am seeing you looking at me. I am going to keep to time. So, I mean, we completely understand that retrofit is challenging and it is much broader than just those in fuel poverty. Um, and solutions need to be found on a national scale for everyone. I think earlier when Fiona Hislop, the MSP, was on, she talked about if we do not take everyone with us, there is no just transition. And it is about the word that can't be overused today in the room has been collaboration. It is certainly something that I will take away from today from the presentations I have heard. But by finding innovation and implementing it for those who can't or get there by their shell is a critical part of that. I mean, we, you know, I've mentioned already your neighbours, the people walking down the street, your elderly family members, are they going to make that transition on their own? And that's something that we're very passionate about, to work with those customers, the end user, but also the, the registered social landlord or the local authority, whoever's responsible for that housing stock, and work alongside them to make sure that nobody is left behind and that people get the right advice and support to them to enable them to make this just transition to a net zero. There you go. Good, you know. Ten seconds left. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Thank you so much.